So, reports have come out now that Paramount are indeed developing a Rugrats movie which will be a live action animation hybrid directed by the guy who did Pitch Perfect. That's right, not a straightforward animated movie, not even a lame live action remake, it will be a hybrid of the two. As in, and I quote from the Deadline article here, a la Sonic the Hedgehog. What? Has Paramount gone mad? <laughs> They've got no money. They just laid off a whole bunch of employees who are now suing them back for doing so, so unceremoniously. This is a company who has been in the news for all of the wrong reasons, with bids from both Sony and Skydance to acquire them before it totally falling through at the last minute. The CEO and board seem to be completely at odds. It's a whole mess over there. And they're still trucking along with the bloody Spongebob movies! This is a mess that needs sensible management of projects, which this does not seem to be. A completely rogue take on a 30 year old cartoon that hasn't even been consistently running like Spongebob has. I mean, I know they rebooted it as a CG cartoon a few years ago. Was that actually successful? There was also a genuine attempt at an animated movie, but that got cancelled. Is this just what Paramount are doing now? As long as you can look at the movie and go, a la Sonic the Hedgehog, then we're all good to go. I mean, I know the Sonic movies have been one of the few candles still burning over there, but why is this the next logical step? Surely the animated candle project is just easier to revive at this point. Are the babies going to be CG while the parents are played by actors? Are we introducing a portal to the real world premise in an IP where it absolutely makes no sense to introduce that? Or even when it does make sense, it is done horrendously? I mean, oh my god, why are they doing this? But okay. Here's a franchise recap, as this will actually somehow be the fourth Rugrats movie now. So for those forgetting, as a franchise, Rugrats was huge. Rugrats was an incredibly successful animated series produced by animation house Klasky Chupo, which debuted its first episode on August 11th, 1991. That's right, Tony Stark's parents would have gotten to see the Rugrats before the Winter Soldier killed him. What a weird timeline. And I'm not even exaggerating when I say that this show made Nickelodeon as a channel. This was one of their very first ever animated shows commissioned, or I guess Nicktoon as they'd come to be known. The first being Doug, and the second being the Ren and Stimpy show. Three shows that would be the archetype for the golden era of Nickelodeon, and Rugrats was the biggest success of them all. This was also a big moment for Class Key Chupo, who up to this point had made their name animating those early seasons of The Simpsons. However, eventually, through some behind the scenes drama between the Simpsons big bosses and Mr. Gatwa Chupo himself, they would eventually part ways. Thankfully he wasn't too worried as Rugrats was just launching around this time. Each episode largely at the Pickles house because Stu and Dee Dee seem to have a more flexible home life than every other parent in existence in the 90s, would then have us enter the world of Tommy, Chucky, Phil, Lil and <sighs> Angelica. <laughs> You also have Tommy's brother Dill and Kimmy, both introduced through the movies, but we'll get there. The thing that really made this show pop was how the most benign of situations within the home would be reimagined from the baby's perspective. You'd have the babies in their world and then the older Angelica usually on her own vibe to the other's detriment. This meant that the show could tell whatever stories it so desired, as long as they could blanket it through the storytelling of the baby's imaginations. Quite honestly, the premise of most of these would be babies get taken somewhere, babies wander off. Whether that's the theatre, a theme park, in one case Tommy's taken to a therapist would you believe it, and yeah, he runs away in that one too as well. The episodes would often cover more relatable topics like Chucky's first haircut or Grandpa moves out. One episode in particular that is often brought up is the Mother's Day special where Chucky's dad finally sits down and talks to him about the death of his mother. This particular episode being praised for its sensitive handling of the subject. The way that Chaz handles the subject in the episode is bang on how a good parent would actually talk to a child about this, which obviously was a big thumbs up for the show's young audience. For a show that has inevitably entailed a lot of gross out and toilet humour, you've gotta say it's really had its moments. Now, the show had an initial run of 65 episodes before a hiatus in production when co-creator Paul Germain left the show. 
Though there were some specials during the hiatus, including two acclaimed episodes centering around Jewish festivals. However, it would resume to full seasons again in 1997, actually reaching its peak of popularity through repeats of the show during its hiatus. This led to the first theatrically released movie that the subsequent year, which would see the introduction of Tommy's brother Dill. And to give you an idea of how big this movie was, it was the first ever non-Disney animated movie to cross a hundred million dollars at the box office. You got that? The Rugrats just about beat DreamWorks and all the others to the post. This is also a key moment as this was the debut production of Nickelodeon Movies, who would go on to bring us some great movies, but also probably this upcoming freak show of a movie they're developing now. Indeed, with the success of the film, Nickelodeon Movies would catapult itself into a slate of largely adaptations of their TV shows, but also some original efforts as well. Weirdly, their first original release was a screwball comedy called Snow Day, starring Chevy Chase. This would be followed up by Charlotte's Web, Hotel for Dogs, The Spiderwick Chronicles, and lest we forget, Angus Thongs and Perfect Snogging. Quite the rogue entry there. But yeah, largely movies of their shows, which would include a further two Rugrats movies. We had Rugrats in Paris in 2000, which saw Chucky's storyline expanded further, finding a stepmom and a sister by the end of it. And then a couple of years later, we had the crossover movie Rugrats Go Wild, or as it was called in some territories, Rugrats Meet the Wild Thornberries. Wow, wonder what happens in that film. However, all good things must come to an end with the original Rugrats series bowing out in 2004. And oh god, this thing ended 20 years ago? After 172 episodes becoming Nickelodeon's longest running series until SpongeBob overtook it in 2012, it was time for the babies to grow up. In fact, they already had the previous year with the launch of the sequel series All Grown Up in 2003, which saw all the babies in their teen years. Whilst never quite being the same as the original series, it did get a full five year run until 2008. So in terms of canon, I guess this was the point that we said goodbye to the original versions of the characters. 1992 to 2008, a very respectable long running show. Until we get to 2021 when they dug these characters up for a CG reboot. One of many interesting things to come out of the launch of Paramount Plus, which absolutely dug into their IP archive to see what they could do. This was the result. I haven't seen any of the episodes, but my understanding is it's literally a rehash of the old show. Apart from an updated setting to the 2020s instead of the 90s, all the characters are the same and it's just the same thing. But with this animation, take that as you will. They've now done two seasons of this with the latest episode releasing this year, so no, I don't think it's been cancelled yet, but I'm pretty sure there was a movie. Regardless, I have no idea how successful it is, but hey, they're making this movie now, so maybe it has budged this 30-year-old property back into the limelight. I mean, hey, Scooby-Doo has been doing similar since the 60s, so it's not unprecedented. So yeah, over to the new movie we've got coming our way. The fourth one overall, and in case this really needed to be pointed out, the first to be a live-action CGI hybrid. This is such a bad idea. As Deadline writes, Everyone's favorite adventurous toddlers are getting the big screen treatment, unlike any film or show in the franchise before. It will be directed by Jason Moore, best known for the original Pitch Perfect movie, which, by all accounts, was a massive success. I just don't see the journey from A to B here. I mean, his most recent effort was Jennifer Lopez's Shotgun Wedding, which didn't get the best critical response in the world. Also, side note, uh, whilst looking this up, I noticed that Jennifer Lopez was in Shotgun Wedding and another movie called Marry Me in the same year. She also married Ben Affleck that year, Year, but that also didn't go so well. Anyway, from marriage to babies, Rugrats is the guy's next directing gig. As for the rest of the creative team, Saturday Night Live actor Mikey Day and head writer Streety Seidel having penned the script. And most notably, Rugrats co-creators Arlene Klasky and Gabor Chupo are indeed producing it. So with the OG seal of approval, though I wouldn't blame them if this was just for the money. But again, the big emphasis here is that it will be CGI babies in a live action setting, which I don't get at all. With stuff like Looney Tunes, that's a fit when putting them in a live action setting. SpongeBob, the underwater world is animated and the surface world is live action. Clever idea. Scooby-Doo, live action humans, CGI dog. Nicely done. That did then lead us down the path of Garfield, Yogi Bear and so on, but uh, it was still nicely done the first time. 
and the second. Rugrats in live action with CGI babies. What exactly is their plan here? Usually I reserve judgment when we don't have a lot of information on a project. We don't even have a single frame at the minute, but currently I can see two timelines for this. One is a horrific world where the adults are actual humans, but all their children have the original cartoon character designs, which is an immediate absolutely not for me. The other is a Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers meta comedy route, which was another example of a 90s relic being used as a platform for tongue-in-cheek industry in-jokes. Which again though, I just don't know whether this is the property where that would be a good fit. I hope it's not that. I mean, what's the story even gonna be? Is it just an escalation of the baby's runaway premise, but this time they find a portal into the live-action world? For that kind of premise, I feel like the Rugrats would have had to have been at the peak of their popularity for that to be interesting for audiences. There was another suggestion from an article in The Guardian asking whether it'll be CGI Pickles family ending up in a live-action neighborhood, and then we'd have 90 minutes of people looking at them weirdly. Another terrible sounding idea. I don't know how you're meant to stitch this premise together. Currently, I'm regrettably leaning on the idea that the parents are gonna be normal with weird looking CGI babies. Don't ask any questions about how the birth happened. Unless there's another option here, I am simply baffled by this concept. I don't like the look of the current reboot, but at least it's kept in an environment where these weird character designs still make sense. Why couldn't it just be an animated movie? Like, just go back to that. It works here as a TV show. Just give that more budget. Why are they going all in on making a live action hybrid for this property? Is it a budgeting thing? Is it cheaper to do that? I'm also unsure who this movie is for. People who grew up with the series are all largely in their late 20s and 30s, some in their 40s. I'm guessing they'll be heading for the playbook of we'll trick these adults to bring their kids to the movie. You know, we've seen this done by the likes of all sorts of other properties where the adults go for the nostalgia only to realize the movie itself is completely geared to the younger viewers who don't care about this old property. I'd say I have hopes that there's something for everyone. I'm just not sure this movie will end up being for anyone, you know? This is also modern day Paramount we're talking about here. They are very lost and confused. Also, how detailed are the graphics gonna be for this? Are they staying relatively soft and cartoony, or is the baby's skin gonna look horrifically realistic with every single pore visible? Just imagine a super detailed render of Tommy and his completely teethless gums. You may just find yourself scarred with a whole movie like that. Perfect to show to your baby children. It just feels like a reverse problem for the live action characters in the Minecraft movie, and we all know how the design choices in that are coming across. Clearly they must have some sort of idea for this, having a apparently been in development for a while now, I just can't put my finger on what that will be. From where I'm standing, this is a series that once had a huge cultural impact and a solid run as part of millions of people's childhoods. It ran for 12 years, had spin-offs and movies, with one becoming the most successful non-Disney animation of all time for a bit. It bowed out at the right time and leaves an incredible legacy, which is why I personally don't think this movie is what anyone is looking for. The people who cared for this property have grown up and moved on, and my impression of the reboot is that it doesn't have the same cultural stronghold as its dominance in the 90s. If you wanted something with that kind of impact of its golden years, you should have just done a Bluey movie. The exact same conceit with those characters would also just make a lot more sense than Rugrats. Honestly, I also think it's just another symptom of how far Nickelodeon have fallen off the bandwagon as well. Excluding all the dark stuff from their naughty sitcoms, their use of their legacy franchises just continues to be depressing. SpongeBob limps on alongside the spin-offs that the now deceased creator asked them not to do, not to mention the increasingly terrible movies they keep putting out. And then Fairly Odd Parents also got the Rugrat CGI treatment just this year, and it doesn't look great. So, no. I'm not optimistic for this movie, but it is the latest in animated movie news. And by God, is it a wild idea. For now though, I'm gonna end things off there. My name's been Daz. Thank you very much for reaching the end of this video. Let me know your thoughts on this odd Rugrats project. How could they possibly do it well? And will it? We know. And on that note, I shall see you in a little bit.